save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855-955-7866. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Most people know that drinking pure high alkaline pH water is the most important factor in maintaining high energy and vibrant health. Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals. Using Plasma pH Drops is the best way to make your water alkaline to help you get rid of acid and regain your health and energy. Simply put 10 drops in the water you drink to raise the pH to a healthy level. Alkalizing water helps your body rid itself of acidic waste and increases the oxygen content of your body. Disease organisms like bacteria, viruses, and cancer cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops now by going directly to AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776 today. A little right, a little left, but always independent-minded. The Genesis Communications Network. G-C-N. We are back on this Easter transmission. I want to go to our archives and play part of an interview that David Knight and Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWars.com did recently with a true American political prisoner, Barrett Brown, an interview from jail. He's in prison for exercising his free speech. You know this country's in danger when stuff like this is happening. Let's go to the city. Let's go to Barrett Brown. Barrett, I wanted to give you a chance to talk to the public. Uh, we, we talked about your comments to the judge saying that uh, this isn't about the rule of law anymore. We now have the rule of law enforcement. Tell us uh, what you want to tell us about your trial now that the gag order has been taken off. Well, the first thing I should mention is that uh, aside from what I put forth in the article for the Daily Beast uh, about a month ago, and aside from what I'll tell you about today, the the great majority of the things that people need to know about the trial are still sealed, and that'll that'll that sh- should continue for about six months. Uh, so, in addition to all the all the very egregious things that have happened, uh, there's there's a great deal more that's still not public. Now, uh, regarding the trial, I guess the, the basic lesson here is that the federal government can do whatever it wants, essentially, within the Department of Justice, uh, within the federal justice system. Uh, that's that's clear from the extent of the perjury, uh, very demonstrable perjury that occurred in this case. Uh, again, some of which is, is uh, visible, some of which can be confirmed publicly through documents, some of which is still sealed. And that's really what I've tried to convey to the judge in, in that uh, the allocution I gave, is that you know when, when you allow this perjury uh, to occur, uh, we're, we're getting away from the rule of law. We're, we're getting to a situation in which we're going through the forms. We're, we're, we're meeting in a nice, very pretty hardwood room with paintings and, and it's a big, nice wood podium and very pretty robes and all that. But you're missing something, which is the rule of law. And to the extent the rule of law isn't there, you're going to see things like anonymous. You're going to see things like WikiLeaks. Uh, you're going to keep seeing them uh, until we get the rule of law. One of the things, reading the transcript, the judge dressed down the prosecutor for not referring to you as Mr. Brown. And I, as you're just talking about, you've you got this fancy room with all the trappings and everything, but they're grinding the rule of law into the ground. And I thought, he's worried about being polite to people while he's doing the, while he's railroading this whole process. And that that, that was amazing. Kind of thing is, that kind of thing is very important to establishment characters in D.C. It's very important to, to uh, the people who, who have that federal government mentality. You know, I, I would have preferred him to object uh, at the last uh, hearing when the prosecutor asked the FBI agent, how long has Barry Brown been an anarchist? Mm-hmm. That would have been the 
time to object when they start asking about my, my political ideology. And, and incidentally, uh, this thing about me being an anarchist, which is true, uh, that actually comes up in a couple of other documents, including the uh, the gag order when when they when they asked for me to be gagged. One of, me being an anarchist was one of the reasons they cited. In one of the documents that's still sealed uh, regarding my sentencing, uh, they call for me to give additional prison time because I'm an anarchist and thus uh, more likely, apparently, to commit crimes. So th there's a lot of egregious things that, on an individual basis, really should have been a national story You know, on each given thing. Uh, obviously, the seizure of the Declaration of Independence in a more perfect world uh, would have been a major news story. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, the world we're in, it didn't quite, didn't quite rate national coverage. Yes, that was amazing. Tell the audience about that. Well, among the uh, items, and you can see this, and this, this is links to from my, my Daily Beast article, uh, my post, Cyberpunk and Digital Servitude, which you can find online, uh, you know, we, we have the, the list of, of items they seized as you know, evidence of a, of a crime. And you know, it's computers, it's my notes. There's only one book they took. Uh, I have a lot of books in my apartment at the time, and, and the only book they took was a copy of the Declaration of Independence, just this little pocket copy. Well, that's radical. Never, explained, <laughs> ne never have to explain why they took it. Uh, I'm assuming it, it has to do something to do with the, the FBI memorandum a few years ago and they said, you know, patriots, uh, militia types, they like the Constitution, they might have a copy of the Constitution, thus having a copy of the Constitution might be evidence of a crime. I'm assuming they just sort of got it mixed up with one of those, one of those enlightenment documents. You know, FBI agents aren't as educated as we might expect them to be, or might help them to be anyway. So they just grabbed it and then, you know, never came up with the trial. Would have been, even for them, it would have been a little much to actually discuss that, uh, you know, in the course of the trial. So. One of the things you mentioned the, at the end of the article was two days before your sentencing, the Department of Justice withheld from the defense team chat transcripts from Jeremy Hammond. Tell us about that. This call is from a federal prison. Oh, sorry, that's one of those charming little reminders. Okay. Once well. um, yes, <laughs> it actually came out two days before in an article by, I think, Dale Cameron. Uh, that, in fact, and this is something we had no idea of, the, the Department of Justice had documents that show quite quite demonstrably that I was not a co-conspirator in the Stratford hack, uh, which which was a major uh, point, you know, the DOJ's uh, favor in getting me, you know, actually getting me additional prison time, this claim that I was somehow a co-conspirator. And they withheld that evidence. And it, I mean, the evidence is, is now public. It, it's, it was made public uh, before, before my sentencing. And this is something that, again, in a more perfect world, the judge would care about just as much as he cares about whether I'm called Mr. Brown or Barrett or mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, yeah, but it just didn't quite, uh, didn't quite come to his attention. Didn't, didn't quite interest him very much. Uh, it's actually, it's actually just goes to show that this, this particular case, obviously, it's inconvenient for me to be in prison. But on the other hand, we have a great example here. Uh, this whole case, the investigation, to, all the way to the sentencing, of how this system works, uh, particularly if, if the DOJ wants you, you know, very much wants you to, to do prison. Uh, time. It, it's just a great example of how they're able to get away with these things, even in the public eye. And it, there's the other story here, of course, is uh, how poorly the mainstream media uh, does in, in keeping up with these things. Absolutely. Well, we spoke on the phone the other day, Barrett, and you were talking about, uh, I was asking you uh, what you knew about the uh, Michael Hastings uh, you know, case and uh, how the FBI came out and said that they weren't looking into him. And you said that you believe that, you know, 99% that FBI was definitely looking to him. Yeah, it's, uh, even, even aside from the other reasons they would have to look into him, it's absolutely ludicrous for them to say that because with regards to my group, Project PM, which runs the echelon2.org website, which was really what this case was all about, uh, you know, they, they, they subpoenaed the IP address information for everyone who's ever contributed to that, to that website of ours. And so these are just sort of small players within Project PM. Now, Michael Hastings, on the other hand, as I noted in a Vanity Fair article a number of years ago when he was still alive and when I was writing about him, uh, you know, he was instrumental when I was first creating Project PM in helping me sort of flesh out the philosophy of it. Uh, so the idea that he, who was in contact with me regarding Project PM, was never investigated uh, regarding Project PM is absolutely 100% ludicrous. And again, that's, that's in addition to the other reasons they and other, certain other organizations would have to be investigating and harassing him. He obviously did a great job. He's, well, he's best known for, for sort of forcing McChrystal to resign a number of years ago, but really his article uh, exposing the PSYOPs campaign used by, I believe, a two-star general in Afghanistan against visiting senators, that's something I cite constantly uh, in my articles for The Guardian or wherever as evidence of here's what these people are willing to do even to your elected officials. Obviously one of the charges is the fact that he merely provided a link to the Stratfor email leaks. What kind of precedent does that create for uh, web publishers, for activists going forward? Well, it means that the federal government 
government now has an expanded toolkit, a vastly expanded toolkit, by which to come after anyone that they wanted to come after to begin with, whether or not they've actually committed a crime. Uh, by by uh, criminalizing the act of linking, especially in my case when you don't even know what you're linking to, uh, and, and had no interest or, or use for, for the, in this turn, it's turned out the credit card numbers in addition to other information that I ended up linking to, which was already public, uh, that, that sets a terrible precedent by which journalists, researchers uh, are now at risk. And, of course, there are some journalists and researchers who uh, are, are a danger to the government, and, and especially the DOJ, and thus, you know, the DOJ now has one more option by which to come after them. Uh, Quinn Norton, who writes for Wired and who testified at my uh, hearing, uh, she, she ex- explained a few days afterwards, after this uh, decision, that she was going to stop doing security uh, reporting. Now, it's too dangerous. She, she told this to the judge. The judge at my hearing said, you know, well, I'm going to go ahead and hit him with this, this additional uh, year in prison for the uh, linking. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a concern to journalists, which is, is bizarre because, of course, journalists have been expressing concern about this, those charges uh, ever since they were made two years ago. And even at, right after my, my uh, sentencing, there was a number of articles in uh, U.S. News and World Report, uh, Columbia Journalism Review, The Intercept, again, expressing concern about this. So the judge is not a a brilliant flower of jurisprudence or anything, really. You know, he's, just, he's just sort of a puppet of the DOJ. Unfortunately. Not, a, not a bad guy, just doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, and so, again, alas, that's that situation we're in now. Now, hopefully something will come of this in, in the case in general. Hopefully people will make use of what's happened in my case to bring some attention to, to the mainstream. Uh, because, again, this affects journalists. And, you know, when you start coming after journalists, then you start, you have the option, the potential to get journalists' attention. Especially when you were uh, quoting someone, a uh, Fox News contributor, and then they, they use that against you, that quote. Yeah, and that's, that's really, I think, the most bizarre, the number one most bizarre thing in a comedy of bizarre errors. Uh, the fact that a, a Fox News commentator went on television and talked about how he wanted, we should murder Julian Assange. Mm-hmm. I quoted that on my Twitter account. You know, and of course, Julian Assange is, is someone who I respect and he respects me. We have sort of an association. Uh, that ended up my indictment, as if it was something that I said or, or you know, approved of. And uh, even after we pointed out, you know, in a, in a filing that, you know, this Barrett Brown didn't say this. This is, a, this is some other guy that Barrett Brown obviously wouldn't get along with saying it. Uh, the prosecution stuck with it. Instead of saying, oh, this is a mistake, or you're right, they stuck with it and said, yes, he's promoting this quote, which, is, again, it really raises the question of if it's, if it's a terrible quote that even promoting gets you indicted, then how come the guy who said it on national television hasn't been indicted? And the answer, of course, is because the guy on Fox News is not a danger to the DOJ. He's, he, like commentators are both left and we'll right. be right back after this quick break in the second hour and i'm going to go beyond saying don't touch that dial spread the word on facebook twitter call your friends and family and tell them to tune in to the second hour of information this is going to be jam-packed with daniel Essen on the bilderberg group dr wakefield on the danger of vaccines the top lawyer and former head lawyer for the fcc bruce fine will document the power grab happening right now with the fcc and the internet All this and more in the second hour, so stay with us. Hey, everyone. You know, Mark and I were talking the other day about Guns80.com and how people really want ghost guns. They want 100% privacy. So Guns80.com is allowing you now to call them, give your address, and they'll ship you out with a money order or some very private instrument. You can work that out with them. They'll ship you out a gun in a like a brown paper wrapper so no one even knows you have it. No records will be kept to be 100% private. But you got to call them. 844-2-GUNS-80, 844-248-6780. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold, Gold for your retirement, call 800 686 2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800 686 2237. Secure your future and call 1 800 686 2237. Producing over 500 hours per week of talk radio, GCN Live is a world leader in talk radio. Archives for the following program can be found at GCNlive.com. We are now into the second hour on this Easter edition. I want to thank all of you for listening and spreading the word. I'm Alex Jones. We're now going to go to a special report from InfoWars Nightly News. And when we return, we'll have excerpts of an extremely important interview we did with investigative journalist, best-selling author Daniel Estelin on the secrets of the Bilderberg Group, then Dr. Wakefield, Bruce Fine, and more.
There is an extra special and rare total lunar eclipse taking place this Saturday morning. It has some people worried for this Easter weekend. The blood moon is a rare celestial event, yet for the third time in less than a year, the moon will dip behind the Earth's shadow.